This video is intended to be a guide for qualified repair personnel. Proper understanding and use of any equipment, parts, or tools is a responsibility of the repair person doing the repair. Working on some Vectec parts can be hazardous if not done correctly. Always use personal protective equipment when repairing Vectec parts. The safety and security of personnel and property is the sole responsibility of the person performing the repair or testing of Vectec parts and is not the responsibility of Vectec or its employees. It is important for the repair person to understand the operation of the Vectec part and any equipment and tooling used in the repair and testing of the Vectec part. Vectec is not responsible for repairs that are not performed by Vectec personnel. No guarantee or warranty is provided or implied by this video. If you have any questions, give us a call at 800-992-0236. We will be glad to guide you to a successful repair. Having the bench you're assembling the decoupler on wiped clean of all contaminants is very important. You'll want to review the list of parts to be retained and the list of parts to be replaced and verify you have everything to complete the job. The lists are in the links below, including the tools and equipment needed to complete the repair and test of the pallet decoupler. We will begin by inspecting the bore of the accumulator. If the bore is scored or has pitting inside, the decoupler is not repairable. Any damage to the bore of the accumulator will allow the nitrogen to seep out past the piston seals over time, and eventually your accumulator will have no precharge. We will start by installing the parts of the filter assemblies, starting with A1 and B1 ports, a diffuser disc followed by the Teflon ring, the 25 micron filter, another Teflon ring, and the second diffuser. Both ports get the same parts. Then install the snap ring in the port snug against the diffuser disc. Be sure to push the snap ring snug against the disc and that it snaps in the groove. Next we will begin with the parts of the overpressure relief. Start with the ball then dimple disc, with a dimple against the ball, then the spring followed by the hollow set screw. Using the measurement taking at disassembly, tighten the set screw down to the depth it was at disassembly. Next we'll install the check valve and o-ring in an A2 port. A tiny amount of oil on the o-ring will keep it on the check valve. Torque the check valve to 24 inch pounds using the check valve spanner. Now install the filter components on top of the check valve. Start with the diffuser disc followed by the Teflon ring, 25 micron filter disc, the second Teflon ring, and the second diffuser disc and hollow set screw. Torque the set screw to 25 inch pounds. Next, install the dash 012 O ring on the pilot piston. Then install a Teflon backup ring on each side of the O ring. Lubricate the O-ring on the pilot piston. 
Carefully insert the pilot piston assembly into the B2 port with the tip of the piston pointing down. Lightly tap the piston into the cavity, being careful not to drive the tip into the check valve disc. Lubricate the dash 908 O-ring and install it on the pilot piston plug. Install the pilot piston plug in the B2 port. Next, we'll install the two 018 black O rings on the adapter block. Lubricate them with oil and install the block on the body with the cap screws. Install the 178 micron filter discs in the ports of the adapter block. Then you want to install the Dash 906 black O rings on both sides of the two SAE6 male adapters. And install the adapters on the two male quick disconnects. Place the pallet decoupler block in a vise. Torque the cap screws in the adapter block to 12 foot-pounds with a 3 16 inch hex bit. Thread the adapters and disconnects into the adapter block and torque them to 25 foot-pounds with a 15 16 deep socket. Next, torque the pilot piston plug to 30 foot-pounds with a quarter-inch hex bit. Now install SA6 plugs in the open ports, all except the A2 and B2 ports. We will use them for testing. We will now assemble the accumulator. Lubricate the bore of the accumulator with hydraulic oil. Install the two blue crown seals on the accumulator piston and insert the piston in the bore with the cavity of the piston outward. Tap the piston down into the bore. Install the O-ring on the accumulator gland, which is also the cap, and install the gland in the accumulator body. Torque the gland with the spanner to 55 foot-pounds. Lightly lubricate the O-ring of the fill valve and install the fill valve in the accumulator gland. Torque to 100 inch-pounds with a 9 16 deep socket. Finally, we will charge the accumulator with nitrogen. You will need two lengths of a high-pressure hose with a ball valve connecting them. One end will be connected to a pressure regulator that is on the nitrogen bottle. And the other end will be connected to an accumulator fill valve adapter. You can see we have a handle attached to our adapter to help remove the adapter. You can use a set of locking pliers to do the same thing. They give a little mass to help the adapter spin off to reduce the loss of nitrogen. Thread the fill valve adapter onto the fill valve, just snug. Do not tighten. If tightened, the fill valve may back out when trying to remove the adapter. Set the regulator on the nitrogen bottle to 1800 PSI for a 1500 PSI accumulator. Open the ball valve slowly to fill the accumulator. Allow the pressure to stabilize for a few seconds. Then close the ball valve and remove the fill valve adapter with a rapid rotation to keep pressure loss to a minimum at separation. A 
A2 and B2 ports will be left open to hook up for testing.